If you had this $30.3 million Cartier ruby ring and you threw a diamond at it, that diamond would de but I'm going to tell you more about that at the end of this video. So in this video, I'm going to explain the four key most important points that you need to know about shopping for rubies in the short but sweet ruby buyer's guide. Now, of course, let's start though by first talking about two important factors. Number one, how will you overall save money on rubies? And then number two, what do you want your ruby jewelry to do? Now, I find this to be really important to talk about first of all how you're going to save money because quite commonly when shopping for rubies you're going to hear two very common terms pop up. One, this is a Burmese ruby. And number two, this is like a pigeon blood ruby. Now these are two terms normally placed around very rare colors of rubies. Now color is one part we're going to talk about later on in the buyer's guide though as well. But keep this in mind. Really, if you do want to save money with rubies, start by shopping for a color you love. Now this is really important. When shopping for jewelry, a lot of the time, the term rarity gets thrown around, but rarity doesn't always equal beauty. So find something that you love and that you truly feel that you will wear. Because whether this ruby that you buy ends up being $500 or it ends up being $50,000, it all ends up being just about the same amount of value if it ends up staying in your jewelry box for the same amount of time. So make sure when shopping for color, forget about the whole rarity side of things and look for something that's beautiful and something that you truly believe you will wear. Now that is already one key about saving money surrounding rubies. Now the second part is what do you want your ruby jewelry to do? Now a lot of people bring this up to me often and they'll say, Levon, you know what? I just don't see myself wearing it. It just, it's not the right color for me red. Now this is where you need to think about what it is you want your jewelry to do. Are you looking for something that's a statement piece? A statement piece doesn't just mean the size of the ruby, but it also means the setting that it's then placed within as well. Do you want something extravagant surrounding that ruby with diamonds? Or are you after something a little bit more plain? Like are you after a ruby piece of jewelry that is a ruby piece of jewelry? Or are you after a diamond piece of jewelry that has rubies within it? You have many to be able to pick from, from so many different designers out there as well. But go into the store with this already in mind. What do you want it to do? Because let's say for example, it is a big larger piece. You're after something that turns out to be more of a statement piece. A statement piece when you're talking about a piece of jewelry featuring rubies is a piece that you're going to be able to wear when you're wearing a single color. For example, if you're wearing a black dress and you find a big ruby pendant, this turns into a statement piece, a piece that attracts attention as well. Now that could also be with a little bit more of an extravagant piece with lots of diamonds and rubies placed together though as well. But that also comes back down to the size and it comes back down to also what you're going to normally wear. Now let's get into the buyer's guide and the four important points that you need to know before you start shopping for rubies. Starting with point number one. Color, color and color. Color is the most important factor when it comes into the price of a ruby. When you're looking at the rarest color, that, that's from a pure red tone through to a red with a slight amount of purple within it. Now, now are you going to either side of that spectrum though as well where a ruby gets really intense and really dark closer to a maroon type hue that's where the price starts to decrease slightly or if you go to the other side of things where your ruby goes a little bit more to the pinker side when you're talking about color that's where again the price significantly decreases. Creases. 
So this is something to seriously keep in mind. Color is something that you can go to either side with depending on if the color is the most important thing for you or if it is going to be the size of your ruby or the clarity that we're going to talk about later as well. So like let's say for example you're used to the carat weight of a 10, 20 or 30 carat gemstone and you're wanting that within a ruby but in that rear color range it's not really fitting within the budget best thing that you can do is go to either side go to the pinker color of a ruby or go to the darker color of a ruby as well this way you can save money on color but place more money into that carrot weight too now of course if you are wanting to start that way and maybe you're thinking my taste might change over time and you might want to go to something a little bit more intense in color then as well then i would say it's also important to shop around for a jewelry store store that allows you to trade that piece back in over time because quite commonly when it does come down to jewelry a lot of the time if you're trying to resell it independently it might lose its value so make sure to check out the different jewelry designer brands that are out there like Levian for example have an upgrade and trade in policy or different jewelry stores directly if they have a trade in policy I would stick with them so that way you have flexibility over time to change your piece of ruby jewelry as you your style changes too. Now let's talk about the next part, part number two in the Ruby Buyer's Guide. Now I did not tell you about this part, but make sure to stay to the end of the video because I'm then also going to tell you a fifth bonus tip when it comes into buying rubies. And that's talking about the metal that it's then set in. The metal that it's set in then highly can affect the color you see in your piece of ruby jewelry. Clarity, clarity is a huge factor when it comes into rubies and different price points. Now rubies without inclusions are practically non-existent. So if the jewelry store that you're shopping at shows you a ruby without inclusions, make sure to ask for a certificate with it, just to make sure this ruby is natural and it is not lab grown. Lab grown rubies are a significantly different price point compared to natural rubies. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail with the different names of inclusions here uh, and exactly what they mean but here are some images to give you a little overview of some of the terms you might hear jewelers tell you when they are selling you a piece of ruby jewelry you might hear about needles silk color zoning and fingerprints basically long story short if you can visibly see an inclusion or visibly see something in your ruby that just does not look right then that is an inclusion now not all inclusions are bad some inclusion patterns in a ruby can actually create something called asterism asterism is kind of like creating a ruby with a star on it you can see the image on the screen showing you what that looks like that actually makes that ruby be extremely extremely valuable though as well now of course if you can visibly see an inclusion in your ruby and that's not something that you're okay with then i would definitely say ask to see something else otherwise this is a huge area where you can potentially save some money with as well depending on the color of that ruby some inclusions that i've mentioned might actually practically be invisible too so make sure to check different pieces and and have a closer look for yourself so you truly know what you are getting. Now let's move on to the next point. Now before we do talk about cut, let me tell you a little bit more about that $30.3 million Cartier Ruby that I mentioned at the start of the video. This was actually a world record Ruby. They sold this at Sotheby's. Sotheby's is an online auction house, well at an in-person auction house though as well. In 2015 they sold this magnificent ring setting a world record as well. The carat weight of it was 25.59 carats. Now I want you to tell me down in the comments who do you think will set the next world record for a ruby piece of jewelry? Quite often these records are set by either Christie's or Sotheby's auction house. Maybe you think it'll be a different auction house. Scrolling down into the comments and let me know. Now let's talk about the cut. Now talking about cut this 
this is actually really important because the crystal of a ruby is actually grown in a shape that allows ovals and cushion cut rubies to be the easiest shape to cut from the crystal. Now do keep this in mind when you are shopping for rubies because you still are going to find trillion cut, marquee cut, pear cut as well and rounds too. But these shapes are most commonly cut from larger crystals or crystals that are shaped in a different way compared to the normal. This normally is going to mean that those rubies that are cut into those shapes, apart from oval and cushion, are generally going to be of higher quality, either meaning they're a higher color or they are a higher clarity. Now this can mean there is a slight premium placed on different shapes as well. So keep this in mind for when you are shopping for rubies because you might just find yourself getting a slight discount when it comes into an oval or a cushion though too. But still remember, jewelry is meant to be worn. If the piece you end up buying just ends up sitting in your jewelry box and you don't wear it because you don't love it, well then it doesn't matter if you end ended up spending 10% more or 10% less from picking a particular cut. So keep that in mind, beauty should always come first. Now let's talk about the next point when it comes into buying rubies, which is point number four. Now let's talk about carat weight and we're gonna keep this really simple. If you find a one carat ruby that is $1,000, then you're looking at the same quality of a ruby, but that's in the 10 carat range, that's not going to be $10,000. As the carat weight increases, the price per carat will increase with it. Also, the other additional factor that can add in on top of not just an increase in carat weight, if the piece is created by a specific jewelry brand or a designer jewelry brand, whether that's Tiffany's, Cartier, Alevian, any brand as well, then the store is going to charge you still something for the workmanship that goes into that piece. But let's say you are one wanting to get a bigger look, but you don't have that look in your budget. This is where you can play around with the clarity of that ruby or the color of that ruby, going to either a lighter pinker color of a ruby or a darker, more intense maroon-ish color for a ruby as well, or the clarity. The clarity can then either, the clarity can then slightly decrease. Maybe you are okay with a couple needles or fingerprints in your ruby. Now, of course, if this is something that kind of worries you a little bit saying, oh, I'm not sure if I'm okay with more inclusions or going with quote unquote, a lower quality ruby, make sure to be working with a jewelry store or a jewelry brand that allows you to trade that piece in over time. So you can change the quality of it over time as your personal style changes. Or if you have a little bit more money in the bank and you are wanting to upgrade that piece, make sure to stick with a company that will do that. As I've mentioned before in other videos, Levian, I don't work with them whatsoever, but they do offer a trade-in policy just as an example. We can talk about how to apply it. First of all, you want to know what you want your ruby jewelry to do. How do you want to wear it? Do you want a piece that's for every day or do you want something that's more of a formal piece too? Depending on your lifestyle, you're going to know what formal and everyday truly is. But this could mean, are you looking for a piece that is just a ruby? Or are you looking for a piece of jewelry that is diamonds with some rubies in that piece as well? Depending on your lifestyle is gonna depend on what side you want to go with and depending on where you are in your life as well. Maybe you just need something that you can wear every day because rubies are your birthstone. Now keep that in mind for when you do go in shopping. This way it already helps you to narrow down your choices. Now going on to number two is deciding on what color you like. Now do you like the pure red or pure red to a slight little bit of purple throughout it known as the most rare colors or do you like the little bit more of a pink pinker ruby or a darker, more maroon colored ruby as well. Decide on what color you really like. Depending on the color you like, this is going to highly affect the price range that you are looking within. But go into store with already deciding, okay, I think I really like this color. Instead of going in without color in mind whatsoever, that's gonna make it really hard for you to be able to pick what ruby piece of jewelry is for you. 
Now, the next part is really put your money where you see a visible difference. Now with rubies, you see a visible difference when it does come into color. So for me, I really would say it's extremely important to go in to store with that color in mind. Now, where don't you truly see a visible difference? Well, if I'm standing as far away from this camera as you are from like another person as well, they're not truly going to see clarity differences in your piece of ruby jewelry. So with clarity, quite often you can find pieces where the needles or the inclusions per se are hidden beneath the ruby. They're not visible from the table. So if you can really not see it, unless you're looking at your ruby through magnification, why put your money into something where you can't see a visible difference, instead put your money into a larger stone or a color you like more. So keep that in mind when you are shopping for your rubies is to ask for different types of clarity or different types of inclusions throughout that piece of ruby jewelry, because this can save you serious money and give you a bigger look for a little bit less money as well. Now the next part to remember is your cut. What cut is really for you? Like are you more of a marquee, a pear, or an oval or cushion cut or round as well. Because remember, and if you don't remember it, make sure to scroll back to the cut part of this video though as well, because of how a ruby's crystal is growing, cushion cuts and ovals are going to be the two most common shapes you end up seeing compared to pears, marquee cuts as well, and rounds too, because those cuts only come from a crystal that's kind of formed in a slight different manner, as we could say. So make sure to go in already with a cut in mind that you really like. Of course, as I mentioned, ovals and cushions are going to be less money because that is more common to find because of how Ruby's crystals are most commonly grown. Now, of course, going past cut though as well and really wrapping this all up is remember always to buy what you love. A piece of jewelry that sits in your jewelry box and never gets worn is worth the same no matter the price you've spent on it, whether it's $10 or $10,000 or $100,000 if it does not get worn, it does not get appreciated as well. And buying what you love always, in my opinion as well, means buying with something in mind. Every piece of jewelry has a story behind it. So how would you add your next piece of ruby jewelry into your wearable life scrapbook? What would be the true meaning behind owning that next piece of jewelry, whether it's rubies or whether it's another gemstone as well? Scroll on down into the comments and let me know what your story is behind your piece of ruby jewelry too. Now that you've made it all the way through to the end, let me tell you the bonus fifth point. What metal should your ruby jewelry be set in? Well, this can highly affect the color, so make sure to listen in closely here. If you're going with a yellow gold and you're looking at a darker, more intense red ruby, that's going to make that ruby look a little bit more light in color because the reflection of light from the yellowness is then going to, well, lighten it up. Now, of course, if you're going with white gold, that is not going to make that ruby look a little bit more light in color. It's just going to give that ruby more light overall. Most of the time, this means white gold is going to make your ruby a little bit more darker or intense in color. Now, if you're talking about rose gold as well, rose gold is going to lighten up the color of your ruby slightly too. So keep this in mind. When you are shopping for rubies, if you want your ruby to appear a little bit darker in color, I would personally stick with white gold. If you like your ruby being a little bit more pink in color, rose gold or yellow gold is the way to go for you. Now here is my question of the day. Do you know where the name ruby came from? Do you know why rubies are called rubies? If you do, scroll on down into the comments and let me know. this 30 point with a slight amount of purple. That doesn't make any sense. That. Color is the number one determining factor about the price that when talking about rubies. Uh, there is actually one type of, talk about why the, I'd say.